Who owns your culture? You don't. You don't even own your own soul. You sold your soul cheap. Who determines what you listen to? You think it's your choice? You're completely controlled. To let some young kids that, that work on a computer and make songs computer-wise, they let them take over and, and they rely on these guys. They just, they just put in the money. Make good music. They say, that I can make money on. Those are the big shots behind everything. You never see them. But those are the big shots. Mm -hmm. And they're making billions of dollars on this. Combination of organized crime and, and British financial interests choose a few clever psychopaths to develop their culture. And you just walked right into it. Just walked into a trap. Like an animal, that, 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 that like a, a rat that sees a piece of cheese in a mouse trap. And once that trap closes, you say, this is my culture. And you don't realize that an invisible electric fence has been put up around you that shapes the way you think. The Congress for Cultural Freiheit had, bis to its Aufdeckung, so to say, 1967, uh, 120 Kulturzeitschriften in Europa gehabt. Die hatten eine ganz große Rolle in der Entstehung des Regietheaters. Und uh, ich denke mal, dass man diese ganze bewusste Kriegsführung, kulturelle Kriegsführung rückgängig machen muss, wenn die Bevölkerung wieder in Einklang kommen soll mit ihren eigenen kulturellen Wurzeln. This is a deliberate attack on human society. This, this rock sex counterculture that became the culture. It's no longer the counterculture, it's the culture. And it, it has nothing of meaning for people. So beating up a, a person on the street or turning your back on hunger in Africa or hunger in Los Angeles, you know, the, the, the compassion for mankind is not there. Die Leute haben gar keine Empfindung mehr. Also zum Beispiel viele junge Leute sagen, Afrika, was kümmert mich das? Das lasse ich gar nicht an mich rankommen. Empfinden bedeutet, die gesamte Totalität der Aufnahme intellektuell und emotional des Universums und des Planeten, so wie sie sind. Und wenn man das nicht kann, dann ist da etwas nicht entwickelt. Äh, junge Leute haben eine Tendenz, nicht nur junge Leute, aber vor allen Dingen junge Leute, haben eine Tendenz, ihre Lebenszeit zu verschwenden. Und viele werden geboren, leben, sterben, ohne auch nur, was der Nikolaus von Kuhs die Süßigkeit der Wahrheit genannt hat, auch nur ein einziges Mal zu kosten. Und manche entdecken es ganz spät, die fangen dann mit 70 Jahren an äh, irgendeine kreative äh, Tätigkeit, aber das ist natürlich ein bisschen spät, um noch wirklich Großes zu, zu leisten. Deshalb ist mein Ratschlag an junge Leute eigentlich so zu machen wie Moses Mendelssohn, der eben auch aus Umständen kam, die dem intellektuellen Leben nicht sehr entgegengekommen sind. Moses Mendelssohn hat dann eigentlich, er ist nach Berlin gegangen, er hat sich innerhalb kürzester Zeit alle Wissensgebiete angeeignet, Musik, Geschichte, Philosophie, viele andere Dinge und hat es geschafft, praktisch sehr bald zum Sokrates des 18. Jahrhunderts zu werden, der sich einfach alle Wissensgebiete angeeignet hat. Und das ist meiner Meinung nach ein wunderbares Modell für junge Leute heute, die eben nicht so also Zugang hatten, dass sie einfach sagen, na gut, also ich kann genauso gut jetzt noch mich in der Musik ausbilden, in der klassischen Musik, ich kann Belcanto studieren, ich kann große Poesie studieren, ich kann Dramen studieren, ich kann Architektur, ich kann Wissenschaft studieren. Alle diese Dinge sind mir offen, aber ich muss mich entschließen, das zu machen. Ich will mein eigenes kreatives Potenzial entdecken und das befördern. Und je früher man das im Leben macht, desto besser, desto mehr Zeit hat man, das voll zu entwickeln.
Schiller sagte, was macht man, wenn der Staat korrupt ist und die Masse erschlafft? Woher soll dann die Veränderung kommen? Und dann hat Schiller ja diese wirklich fantastische Antwort gefunden, dass es nämlich nur durch die klassische Kunst passieren kann. Im Grunde ist gerade die Beschäftigung mit der klassischen Kunst das, was den Menschen innerlich frei macht, weil wenn man die Kreativität der Komponisten, der Dichter, der Dramatiker studiert, dann repliziert man das oder man kann es lernen, das zu replizieren und damit wird genau dieser freie Bürger möglich, der in der französischen Revolution eben offensichtlich nicht vorhanden war. Und deshalb denke ich, dass die Kombination von beidem, also vor allen Dingen halt auch die Beschäftigung mit der klassischen Kunst, ein ganz wichtiger Schritt ist für die Antwort auf diese Frage. Everybody's born with it. Let's look at a little baby. Ooh. Takes a big breath. And the, the chest goes out. And then it's quiet for almost think, what's happening? And then the voice comes. Boom! Explodes out there. It's the same technique. Same way. Canto technique and all this is it's meant to build a student up to last throughout their lives. And a good bel canto technique gives you the possibility to sing all your life and your voice never gets old. I met I met people that are like 85, 90 years old and they and they when you talk to them on the phone or so, I mean they sound like they're 20 years old still. And the young just gets young, the voice gets younger and younger. Trust, trust, get call music is is based on two things on the human singing voice what the human singing voice can be and then at the same time it's on the basis of being able to express the kinds of ideas which no animal is capable of expressing which is human creativity mankind is the only species that can change its own behavior in a creative way And what is beautiful and good for mankind is to be human, that is to be creative, rather than doing the same old thing all the time. Naturally, music is a reproduction of the human voice. And all these voices in Bach just gel completely together. And when Beethoven was reaching the height of his emotions, and he couldn't go any further in composition, he would write a fugue. Because the fugue would be the epitome of all these emotions. What we have to do is develop the capacity for people to think in nonlinear ways. And this is what counterpoint is. When you start adding voices, when you have two or three or four or five or six voices that create an increased capability for turbulence or change or a singularity, whether it's a, a, the use of a Lydian interval in a cross voice in a, a, a canon or something of that sort where the mind has to go beyond just following one line. And the best example of this, of course, is the uh, Bach 
And if you want to use Bach, you would take things like the Preludes and Fugues. So that is the best example of a creative artist who has developed an idea of well-tempering, which is designed to enable people to be creative. And if you look at the way that competent people perform the Bach uh, Preludes and Fugues, you get a sense of what creativity is. This necessity of putting yourself through uh, this demanding, most demanding of counterpoint, which is the fugue, uh, is, is essential for the development of any musician. The composer is uh, even more so. Mozart was always a genius, and he had the two phases. You have this before he went into the uh, salon on Sundays and afterward. He had a revolution going into uh, Franz Wieten's salons, as, as Haydn had. Haydn, of course, had composed his set of quartets based on von Sweeten's influence. Um, um, Mozart came into the picture and me did the same thing and then did his, uh, did his quartets in answer to Haydn, dedicated to Haydn, because Haydn had brought him into an understanding this higher thing. <laughs> Das liegt mir sehr am Herzen. Ich habe das schon lange, trage ich das in mir herum. Und äh, ich hat, äh, es hatte eigentlich nie richtigen Anklang gefunden. Und da, die einzige Person, die das sofort verstanden hat, war Lyndon LaRouche. He demonstrated something which I had as a concept, not as an expression. That was one thing, hearing something, and you hear a concept in what you're hearing. And then to understand how to create that expression, how to create it in your own mind, how to generate it in your own mind, is a different thing. So a great performer who has a sense of multifurno, as he did, and I knew that from various, various ways, actually opens up by performing for you something that communicates that idea. You now know it. Die heutigen Forscher, die Mozart- und Haydn-Forscher, die verstehen das überhaupt nicht. Sie wissen, dass es existiert und haben, haben das auch, auch geschrieben. Aber weiter beschäftigen sie sich damit überhaupt nicht. It's a horrible thing to see when professional musicians start seeing what they're doing as a job, as opposed to part of a mission, to bring these beautiful ideas to people. Why are you doing this profession? The responsibility that you have towards music, the moment you're, you're, you've undertaken this, it has to be a matter of life or death to do this profession. Gerade weil der Künstler wie kein anderer die Fähigkeit hat, das Publikum zu rühren. Dass er diese Fähigkeit nicht einfach so einsetzen darf, aus, aus ja, niedrigen Gründen, sondern er soll, bevor er es wagt, sein Publikum zu rühren, müsste er sich selbst erst zum idealen Menschen veredelt haben. Das ist ja eine sehr eine große Herausforderung. Das heißt, der Künstler kann nicht einfach so 
aus dem Tagesgeschäft gehen und platsch die, den, den, das, vor das Publikum treten, sondern er soll sich seiner Aufgabe bewusst sein und den, die, das Publikum die Menschen veredeln. Das hat der Schiller hundertmal gesagt, äh, dass er seine ganze Kunst nur deshalb geschrieben hat, äh, um die Menschen zu veredeln. Und ich glaube, dass, dass wir nicht nur um die Aufführung von klassischen Werken kämpfen müssen, sondern eben auch, dass der Künstler hinter das Werk zurücktritt und das Kunstwerk so präsentiert, wie es intendiert war. Und dann hat es den Effekt. And I looked up and the maestro had a tear in, rolling down his cheek and he said, aren't we fortunate to be musicians? I've never forgotten that moment because he outlined for us the, the, the profession that we were in is a profession of calling and a profession of art and a profession that when you're in, uh, uh, you are closest to God, I believe, when you are performing because you are a vehicle for that wonderful thing that we're getting from on high that comes through us And, and, and makes us a bigger person and makes us the vehicle to transport that to other people. We human beings, we think we have five senses. We actually have more. Uh, if we are intelligent enough, we learn what some of these kinds of, of uh, communication are. Most people are not aware of them. It consciously. They may be affected by them, but they're not really aware of them. They are affected by something which to them, consciously, appears to be only chaos. And yet, as Shelley indicates in the concluding paragraphs of his defense poetry, this can be the most important of all. And you find that in the composition of poetry, in the composition of music, that it is precisely this aspect of this, this aspect of resonation, resonance, which is the essential communication. And we do it best in classical musical performance. Der Nikolaus von Kuhs hat davon gesprochen, dass Konkordanz im Makrokosmos nur möglich ist, wenn sich alle Mikrokosmen entwickeln. In Bezug auf die Völkergemeinschaft bedeutet das, dass jedes Volk, jede Nation ihr maximales Potenzial entwickeln soll und dass es das Interesse aller anderen ist, dieser Nation dabei zu helfen und umgekehrt. Und wenn das weltweit in der Universalgeschichte so geschieht, und dann, denke ich, haben wir die Voraussetzungen, um daraus dann aus dem Studium des Höchsten, was die Menschheit bisher produziert hat, wirklich eine neue kulturelle Renaissance für die ganze Menschheit zu initiieren. sagte, es ist mir egal, ob ihr Klebstreifen auf den Fagottinstrumenten, auf den Oboen tut, ihr müsst die Stimmung des Orchesters runterkriegen, <lacht> sonst sind die Stimmen kaputt und der ganze Sinn von der Oper verloren. I knew what was required, because I knew the music. I knew what you had to have because the music was based on the human singing voice. Komischerweise fand ich einen Brief von Giuseppe Verdi, im 1884, wo er schreibt, genau was der Lin sagt. Er sagte, es gibt wissenschaftliche Gründe, warum wir zurückgehen müssen zur, äh, was er nannte, A432 Hertz. Most of the leading singers of that time, who were leading singers at the time, all joined our defense of this tuning against the higher tuning, which is actually very destructive. 
als sie reinkam, war natürlich das Publikum ja total aus dem Häuschen, weil die so berühmt war. Mi batto estremamente perché non è giusto per i giovani che non si devono fare avanti in questa maniera, presi da una scuola, dopo tanti anni di studio, sbalzati improvvisamente in un palcoscenico che può essere quello della Scala, quello di Milano, quello dell'Opera di Vienna, dove si trovano con un'orchestrazione così alta, sono perduti. Das gleiche passiert mit Piero Capuccilli. Mentre arriva Piero Capuccilli, giusto in tempo. Devo dire, se all'inizio, all'epoca di Verdi, il diapason era 4 e 32 e lui ha scritto le opere su quel diapason, logicamente Verdi, che era una persona molto intelligente, conosceva le voci, aveva scritto per le voci. Vogliamo fare un esempio? E devo dire che quando ho provato uh, il 432 per me è stata una scoperta piacevole. No? Io avevo provato a Ida, Cieli Azzurri che presenta veramente una grande difficoltà per il passaggio perché la linea vocale è principalmente nella zona del passaggio. Per me ehm, ritornare a un'intonazione diciamo più bassa di quella che era usata soprattutto vent'anni fa, trent'anni fa, è una questione di rispetto, rispetto uh, per la volontà artistica del compositore, per la sua immagine del colore, del suono, del colore della voce e rispetto anche per lo strumento vocale. Uh, it was amazing uh, the difference and how much more, how much more uh, round uh, the, the music was with the, with the Verdi tuning. This is, this is the way these com compositions were composed and it was meant to be in that tuning. Our, our modern day orchestras uh, are, are tuning ever higher, higher, higher in, in, in Vienna, the flutes have had to shave off their instruments because they can't tune any higher. That, that's, not, that's not natural. And I know uh, the string instruments sound more brilliant when they're tuned higher. But is it just brilliance that we're looking for? Or is it the essence of the way the music was written?